Good morning. Our opening song is number 72, All Hail the Lord Trinity, number 72. celebration we thank the Lord for the blessing of rain that we had we just have received uh, also we thank for all the blessings of healings uh, in our gospel today we hear two stories of healing and we are reminded uh, that God not only heals 
our physical uh, illness, illnesses, but he also heals the human heart. To prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us not call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and the saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light, grant, we pray, that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Brothers 
and sisters, as you excel in every respect, in faith, discourse, knowledge, all earnestness, and in the love we have for you, may you excel in this gracious act also. For you know the gracious act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, for your sake became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. Not that others should have relief while you are burdened, but that as a matter of equality, your abundance at the present time should supply their needs, so that their abundance may also supply your needs, that there may be equality. As it is written, whoever had much did not have more, and whoever had little did not have less. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat>
Jesus said to the synagogue official, do not be afraid, just have faith. He did not allow anyone to accompany him inside except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they arrived at the house, the synagogue official, <coughs> the synagogue official, he caught sight of a commotion. People weeping and waiting loudly. So he went in and said to them, Why this commotion and weeping? The child is not dead, but asleep. And they ridiculed him, and he told, put them all out. He took along the child's father and mother and those who were with him and entered the room where the child was. He took the child by the hand and said to her, Have a room which means, little girl, I say to you, arise. The girl, the child of twelve, rose immediately and walked around. At that, they were all utterly astonished. He gave strict orders that no one should know this, and said that she should be given something to eat. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, uh, as I said in the in introduction, the, the Gospel tells us of the miraculous healing of two people, uh, the daughter of Cyrus and a woman with a hemorrhage. Now surely we can in interpret these two stories in a purely physical level. We see how Jesus, who has compassion for human suffering, heal the sick body of the woman and even resurrected the dead body of a young girl. But we can also interpret these two stories in a deeper spiritual level. Jesus came not only to heal the physical body but to heal the human heart, to give salvation and to ask for faith in him. Now that is why on hearing that Cyrus' little daughter was dead, Jesus tells the father, do not be afraid, just have faith. After healing her physically, Jesus also tells the woman with hemorrhage, daughter, your faith has saved you. Go in peace and be cured of your affliction. The woman not only received healing physically, but her faith is praised and strengthened. So the, the two stories in the gospel then remind us that Jesus came to heal the human heart and above all to save us. The Catholic Catechism of the Church teaches us in these words. Jesus has the power not only to heal but also to forgive sins. He has come to heal the whole man, the whole person, soul and body. Now reflecting on Jesus' miracles in today's gospel, both Emeritus Benedict XVI said these words, quote, These two stories of healing invite us to go beyond a purely horizontal and materialistic vision of life. We ask God to heal so many problems our practical needs, and this is right. But what we must ask Him for insistently is an ever firmer faith, so that the Lord may renew our life, as well as firm trust in His love, in His providence that never abandons us." Unquote. So why is it important to ask for an ever 
firmer faith. Because, my dear friends, faith will not always get for us what we want, but it will get what God wants us to have. True faith actually disposes our hearts to receive or to accept what God wants for us, disposing our hearts to be docile to God's will. Faith also makes us recognize the greatness of God. And so in the Gospel, if you notice, hundreds of people touch or press upon Jesus. But the touch of the woman with hemorrhoids was different. Jesus felt the power flow out of him. That's because the woman reached out to touch Jesus in faith, while others simply brushed against him in an, in an indifferent, impersonal manner. Now, many of us, I believe, had received blessings from the Lord and had experienced our prayers being answered by the Lord many times over. The question is, has the experience led us to a deepening of our faith relationship with Jesus? as our encounter with Jesus made us more trusting, more grateful people. This gospel calls out to all of us who struggle, who question, who search, who doubt. It cautions us to surrender all of that and just trust. So to all who are feeling despair or worry or fear, do not be afraid. Just have faith. Because with God, the impossible becomes possible. Pray for all those around the world struggling to believe. Some may be in this church this morning. Maybe you are one of them. But let go of the skepticism, let go of cynicism. Pray for patience. Pray for trust. Let God do his work. In a popular phrase, let God let go and let God. And in the words of Jesus to Zyrus, do not be afraid. Just have faith. Please stand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, 
who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the light of the world to come. Amen. Aspiring to approach the Lord with as deep a faith as shown by the woman in the gospel, who was content merely to touch Jesus' Jesus's cloak, we give voice to the needs of the world. For the church, that inspired by God's word and nourished by the Eucharist, we may bring hope to those who feel hopeless, love to those who feel unloved, and life to those struggling in desperate circumstances. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. For leaders around the world, that they may relieve the burdens of those who suffer poverty, and injustice, and oppression. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. For those who are in prison, and for all who work to bring true justice to prisoners, who have been wrongly convicted or unjustly sentenced, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. For those victimized by storms or floods, heat or drought, or unnatural, other natural disasters of this time of year, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. For our nurses, hospice workers, and all who care for the sick and dying, may they, may they be blessed in their ministry and know the support of the community. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. And pray for our prisoners, who hold the designs of our hearts, living prisoners, our deceased prisoners. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, for all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, for all our intentions spoken and unspoken, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Continue to pray continually for all those children that have been aborted or left to die in the ruined moments of their lives, the repentance of anyone who has taken any part of an abortion, especially those who support those who advocate abortion. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. God of life and love, you fashioned all things that they might have being and formed us to be imperishable. Help us to respect the life of all your beings as you hear the prayers you make through Jesus Christ, your Son and our brother. Amen.
my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. O God, who graciously accomplished the effects of your mysteries, grant, we pray, that the deeds by which we served you may be worthy of these sacred gifts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for we know it belongs to your boundless glory, that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity, and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Son in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Son in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. May call you therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and those who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
through him, and with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I give you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Be with Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, bless their soul to the supper of the land. Lord, I am not worthy to receive the tender mercy, but I will say the word of my soul shall be
Let us pray. May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life, O Lord, we pray, so that bound to you in lasting charity, we may bear fruit that lasts forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Reminder that if you have done, you have not done so, please pick up uh, some raffle tickets and help sell them uh, to help support our church at the back of the church. The Lord be with you. Amen. May the blessing of the Almighty God be upon you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord in the lives that we live. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our closing song is number 33, Amazing Grace. Number 33.